Hey everyone, welcome to my channel where I discuss all things flameworking. Please leave your comments below and like this video. And above all, subscribe if you have not done so already. Today's topic is light and its relationship with glass. One of the reasons so many people love glass is because of its beauty. And that beauty is mostly the result of how light interacts with glass. We mainly perceive glass via our vision, and that means that light has to pass through or bounce off glass for us to experience it. Different kinds of glass reflect or refract light in different ways. I have always felt it was important for us flame workers to have at least a basic understanding of how this happens since we work with this material every day and depend on these visual aesthetics to appeal to our audience. So in this video, we are going to go over the basics from the various ways glass interacts with light to the chemistry that allows that. I promise I won't get too technical. Formulas and densely worded theorems don't really interest many of us. If you want those, there's a wealth of knowledge available on the internet and I've linked to a few relevant resources in the description below. So let's start with reflection and refraction. Simply put, when light encounters the surface of glass, one of two things happens. It either passes through or bounces off the material, most commonly some combination of the two. If it is transmitted through the material, light actually changes speed. Since the glass is denser than the air, it slows down. If it encounters the glass at an angle, it also changes direction. This directional change is called refraction. Refraction is mainly due to the photons encountering electrons in the glass. There are more electrons in the denser material than there are in the air, so the photons slow down and change direction. This bending of light happens to varying extents depending on the composition of the material and is measured by the material's refractive index. This index is expressed as a ratio to the speed of light in a vacuum. Denser materials have a higher index of refraction. Air, water, and glass all transmit light, but slow it down differently, so they all have different refraction indexes. Some artists like to refer to clear glass as an invisible medium. When you look at a clear piece of glass, all of the light is transmitted and none is reflected. This means that what you really see is the surrounding environment refracted through the glass, not the glass itself. If there were no refraction, the glass would disappear. So what happens if light passes into glass from medium with the same index of refraction? We can find out with this simple experiment. Let's immerse this clear glass rod in this jar of glycerin. Glycerin has an index of refraction of 1.46, very close to that of borosilicate glass at 1.517. Watch what happens. Glass is indeed an invisible medium. When light refracts from an angular incidence, it breaks apart into different wavelengths. This is because different wavelengths interact with electrons in glass to different extents, and so are bent slightly differently. Red light with the longest wavelength is bent the least, while violet light with the shortest wavelength is bent the most. Everything else is in between. This causes the light to pull apart as it travels through the glass and still further apart as it exits the glass, creating what we commonly call a prism. The breaking up of white light into its colored components is called dispersion. If the glass absorbs all wavelengths but one, it is seen as that color. Simply put, if a glass absorbs all colors except yellow, it is yellow glass. This is true whether the glass transmits light or reflects light. 
It is the chemical composition of glass that determines which wavelengths of light it absorbs and which it transmits or reflects. It is important to remember that glass is not a compound. A compound is defined as two or more materials combining chemically to form a new material that was not present before. Instead, glass is a mixture, a homogeneous blend of separate materials that do not combine chemically, sort of like cake batter. So you can mix different ingredients to get glasses that possess different characteristics. Chief among these is color. Here is a chart of some of the chemical elements and compounds used to colorize glass. And here are some videos of colored glass along with the elements and compounds used to colorize them. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Post your comments below and check back here often for more interesting stuff about glass and flame working.